Hey everyone, it's Martin and a couple weeks ago I tried the Huawei P30 Pro, which is quite an expensive phone that not many can afford, unfortunately. But Huawei also released the P30 Lite and I was super curious how this performs in terms of its price. Time to check it out, let's get started. Cut down on cost, Huawei made a lot of internal and external changes and one of them is for example that the 5x zoom is now missing but luckily not the wide angle lens and rather than their high end chipset they've included the Kirin 710 chip with 4 gigs of RAM rather than 8. And the display is also slightly smaller, 6.15 instead of 6.5 and it is rather an IPS panel than OLED. And both remain 1080p displays though. Storage wise both have enough storage, 128 gigs, and it is possible to expand it via a micro SD card. I want to start right away with the camera because the P30 Pro has a very interesting and good camera and it would be nice if we find this on the P30 Lite as well. But before we continue I would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel and also don't forget to press the bell icon so you get notified every time when there's a new video posted. And now that we have that out of the way, the cameras on the P30 Lite are actually pretty good. In terms of colors, they're really nice and vibrant. The results of the 24 megapixel camera are pretty good and only at 200% zooming in you can see that there is some noise showing up. But straight from the camera I'm really surprised by the quality for a light version. And the same counts for the dynamic range. It is nice but sometimes I'm missing the contrast a little bit. I'm really happy with the wide angle lens that it's there but I'm missing some details when you look closely at the edges of the picture and the lens distortion is also pretty good under control. So here's a little stabilization test with the P30 Lite and from what I see it's really good the stabilization with some walking and handheld footage. It looks like that there's a little bit of contrast and sharpening missing, missing, mainly because it's very bright outside right now at the moment. And when it comes down to the panning stutter, like on the P30 Pro, it looks like that this doesn't have it as much as the P30 Pro. And that's mainly because you might know that we are recording in 1080p. The standout over here is the front sensor, which is with a generous 32 megapixel camera. And the details are a lot. It captures some pretty good pictures and the onboard AI beautification allows you for some pretty good and quick selfies. You can also blur out the backgrounds by enabling bokeh through the camera application or add in-depth after the photo is taken. Hey guys, what is up? My name is Martin and as you can see we're recording here with the front camera. I'm also very curious about the audio, so let me know in the comment section down below what do you think. I think also that the footage looks really stable and also the colors are very vibrant. And regarding the exposure levels and the white balance, I think Huawei did a really good job with both the front and the rear cameras. But as always, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Battery wise you get a lot less unfortunately but it's not that bad. First of all the charger is a little bit less than its bigger brothers because it's 18 watts only and secondly the battery itself is almost 1000 milliamp hours smaller. It is stuck at 3340 milliamp hour and also they removed the wireless charging but in return you have a less energy demanding phone and I am also getting around 6 to 7 hours of on screen time which is therefore more than good. Even though Huawei decided to give you a lot less because it's a light version, they also gave you something in return and that's first of all the 3.5mm headphone jack, which I think many will appreciate, and secondly you can still expand the storage via the micro SD card. However for the light version they have removed the IP rating because it's a very expensive thing to add on a phone, the in-display fingerprint scanner and the 5GHz Wi-Fi band and even the Bluetooth version is lowered to 4.2. So now that you know what Huawei did with this phone internally and externally, the question is how does it perform? Well, for a light version, I'm actually pretty okay with it. It is fast, it is fluent, it is smooth and I don't have anything to complain. The APS panel is nice and it's a pleasure to look at. The viewing angles are also good and considering the price, I think that Huawei picked a very decent screen. And for the audio, they kept the mono speaker experience and the quality itself could be a little bit better though. 
Hardware-wise, it supports Huawei's own mid-range Skyrim 710 chipset that's also found in phones like the Huawei Honor 20 Lite, linked here up in the top right corner, so make sure that you check it out after watching this video. The phone will be able to keep up with every day-to-day -day usage, but don't expect to seamlessly jump back and forth between power-hungry applications or play any kind of demanding games without hiccups. A good example is that PUBG plays on medium settings, most of the time very smooth, but there are the occasional frame drops and this is often happening in the waiting room and when there's some intense shooting going on. The good thing is though that this is running on Android 9 out of the box with EMIUI skin on top, also 9. It is not the best skin of course, because I personally prefer vanilla Android, but there are many people that like it and I can understand why. It does come with some bloatware and pre-installed apps, but most of that can be uninstalled. The weird thing is, for example, that there is a Torch app, but the Torch is also in the notifications menu, which only increases the amount of clutter. Even though it remains an IPS panel only, I still miss the dark mode feature like on the P30 Pro and the Mate 20 Pro, linked here in the top right corner, because First of all, it is very relaxing for your eyes at night, everything becomes dark in the settings menu. Even though it doesn't really help you a lot regarding the battery life, because you can't turn off the pixels completely on an IPS panel, I still like the dark scheme a lot. It also includes a lot of features that you can enable to make your life easier, such as gesture support, performance and battery optimization, and a neater settings menu. So the P30 Lite offers a highly polished design, a great screen and a good camera setup with AI for those who love it. However, it is not made for gamers and that's mainly because of the chipset found inside. But more for those who like to take pictures, to have a decent battery life and those who love functionality, for example the 3.5mm headphone jack. Performance and gaming on the phone will likely hold you back, but this phone can handle most of the tasks well enough for like any kind of normal user and the P30 Lite doesn't have a similar battery life like its high-end brothers because of its conservative battery capacity, but if it happens that you run out of juice the phone can charge up relatively quickly with the bundled fast charger. Overall I think that the P30 Lite is a nice addition to Huawei's already very overcrowded budget lineup. It brings for example an interesting mix of specifications and hardware, especially for those who are on a budget. In case the price is still a little bit too steep, its subsidiary Honor just released a 20 Lite found here in the top right corner, which might you want to consider. Thank you so much for watching this video, don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already and then I hope to see all of you in the next one.